my dear junior four students how are you uh, i hope that you're fine and you're safe and sound today we're going to have a new uh, odi lesson and this lesson today is unit three and it's called actions okay this is the book where we are going to have our lesson let's start together so our lesson today is talking about actions. What's the meaning of actions? Actions are the things that we do, like sports, for example. I can call sports, those are actions, things that you can do. Okay, before we get to know about some of those sports, let's listen to this conversation, okay, between the children. And after this, we are going to talk about some of the actions that we have here. Okay, let's listen together. Page 34, Unit 3, Lesson 1, Activity 1. Listen and read. What do the children want to do? 1. Look at the sailing boats, Claire. Let's go sailing. 2. Great idea, but we haven't got life jackets. Shall we go and get some? Let's ask Dad. Three. I'm sorry, it's too windy. You can't go. Oh, oh no. no. Four. How about an ice cream instead? Yes, please. Mmm, I love eating ice cream. Okay, now after we listen to this conversation between two children and their father, they wanted to go sailing, okay? So they went to ask for life jackets, okay? Because you cannot go sailing without wearing a life jacket. In case the, the boat flipped or something, you have to wear a life jacket to save you. So they go and ask the one responsible on the beach. And he told them that he's sorry he cannot give them the life jacket because the weather is very bad and it's dangerous. It's very windy. They were very sad. So their dad, he suggested that they can go and buy ice cream instead. And they were all now happy and they decided to have ice cream. Okay, so what is the first um, sport that was mentioned in this dialogue? Hmm, who can tell me? Excellent, sailing. Sailing is a water sport that you can practice. And whenever you go sailing, you have to wear a... Bravo, life jacket. Excellent, guys. So now I want you to look with me at some... Um, sports and the things that I can use in this sport okay we are going to watch some flashcards here and I hope that you like them very much so who can guess with me what is this picture about okay you have someone wearing a swimsuit okay he is near the surface of the water and he is wearing something over his eyes and in his mouth I call this sport what Hmm, I call it snorkeling. Snorkeling, this is when you go swim wearing a snorkel. So let's hear together this where this uh, sport is. Snorkeling. Snorkeling. Okay, and whenever you go snorkeling, you have to wear a... Snorkel. Snorkel. So the snorkel, this is a tube that you put it inside your mouth and it's very long that it can go above the water through which you can breathe while um, swimming under the surface of the water. Okay? Okay, let's see the sport after this one. I have here, this boy is doing what he is. Surfing. Surfing. What's the meaning of surfing? Surfing means sliding over the waves. And to slide over the waves, you have to use a... What shall I call this? Surfboard. Surfboard. Another water sport that you can enjoy is what sailing this is the one that the two children wanted to go to uh, wanted to go doing okay they wanted to go sailing so and if you want to go sailing you have to wear a life jacket life jacket okay so this is 
to keep you safe in case you flipped or you fell in the water. Another water sport that you can practice is... Yes, I can hear you all say it. It's very easy. Excellent. Fishing. Fishing. Okay, and whenever you go fishing, you learn how to be patient. Okay, you have to wait until you can catch the fish that you want to. And to go fishing, you need to have a... Fishing rod. Fishing rod. Okay, this is the one where you put the bait in, you can throw it in the water and catch the fish. One of the very, very lovely water sports is this one. Can anyone tell me what is this? The boy here is riding in something. Okay, and he has something in his hand and he's also wearing a life jacket. Okay, let's know what is this sport called? Kayaking. Kayaking. Kayaking, this is to go, okay, in a kayak. What, what the boy is riding in is called a kayak. And you can ride in a kayak to go kayaking. And what is he carrying in his hand? This is by which he can move the kayak. It's called paddle. Paddle. The paddle. This is like a stick with two pads from the other side, from the two sides, that you can use to move the kayak forward, to go to the front or go to the back. So this is the paddle. I use it to move the kayak, and the sport itself as a whole is called kayaking. Another very interesting sport is. I can hear you. Yes. Horse riding. Horse riding. Excellent, Junior 4. And if you want to go horse riding, you have to wear certain things to be able to ride a horse. One of these things is... Riding boots. Riding boots. Okay? You have to wear riding boots in case you want to go horse riding. Fine. Okay. Another sport... <clears throat> This one, can you see? Those are a group of people. They are wearing life jackets and they having uh, orders in their hands. And they are riding in a, what, lifeboat. And this uh, sport is called? Rafting. Rafting. Rafting means to sail in a lifeboat or a raft. I can call this a raft or a lifeboat. So this sport is called rafting. I have another uh water sport which is this one is what scuba diving scuba diving scuba diving what's the difference between scuba diving and snorkeling snorkeling you are near to the surface of the water because the snorkel must be outside of the water so you can breathe but when you go scuba diving you are deep down in the ocean or in the sea and you can breathe through an oxygen tank, this one that the boy has over his back. And there is a tube to his mouth, okay, where he can breathe oxygen from this oxygen tank. So scuba diving, this is deep down the water. You are not near to the surface, you are deep down in the water. While the snorkeling, this is near the surface and you use a snorkel that can, it's the long tube that comes out of the water so you can breathe. Okay, so this is the difference between snorkeling and scuba diving. Okay, let's see one of the very, um, I call them dangerous sports because they need someone who's very brave to do it. Okay, one of those sports is, can you see this little boy who is jumping from a very high place and there is like an elastic band is tied to his waist. I call this sport... Bungee jumping. Bungee jumping. Bungee jumping, this is like uh, you have to stand on a very high place and you have an elastic rope around your uh, waist and you jump down and then when the elastic band is stretched, it will take you up again. Okay, like when you jump on the trampoline, you go down and then it shoots you up again. So the same for the elastic band around your waist. This is a very interesting sport. It's called bungee jumping. Another very interesting uh, sport also is, who can guess? Excellent. Rock climbing. Rock climbing. Rock climbing, this is like when you are uh, climbing mountains or hills, okay? And you have to be very uh, careful and you have to have special equipment with you that allows you to go up the rocks, 
okay and you have to have also a safe belt around your waist so that if you fell down it can catch you okay one of the uh, uh, also i call it a dangerous sport which is this one where you are flying like a bird using something that looks like a wing and i call this hang gliding hang gliding hang gliding is jumping from a very high place okay having those wings attached uh, to you and you are catching it in your hands and you jump from a high place and as if you are flying like a bird so i call this again hang gliding hang gliding okay let's go back here to the page that we have and let's see exercise number two you are going to listen to these words and you have to repeat after them and then we are going to listen again after this so the first time i want you to listen and i want you to repeat after page 34 unit 3 lesson 1 activity 2 listen and repeat the sentences then listen and match 1 he likes surfing. He's got a surfboard. 2. She likes kayaking. She's got a paddle. 3. He likes horse riding. He's got riding boots. 4. She likes snorkeling. She's got a snorkel. 5. He likes fishing. He's got a fishing rod. 6. She likes sailing. She's got a life jacket. So now we heard the sports and we repeated after them, right? I hope that you all did. I heard some, but the others I didn't hear their voices. Okay, this time I want you to hear again the same exercise, but this time you have to match. Okay, those pictures are not in order. He is going to say them in a different order. So you have to put, for example, when he says number one, you have to put number one next to the picture that he says. Okay, so I want you to listen again, and this time I want you to match. Okay, let's listen together. Page 34, Unit 3, Lesson 1, Activity 2. Listen and repeat the sentences. Then listen and match. 1. He likes surfing. He's got a surfboard. 2. She likes kayaking. She's got a paddle. 3. He likes horse riding. He's got riding boots. 4. She likes snorkeling. She's got a snorkel. 5. He likes fishing. He's got a fishing rod. 6. She likes sailing. She's got a life jacket. Okay, so let's start to answer together. Okay, number one was what? He said number one. I can hear you answering. Excellent. B, number one is surfing using a surfboard. So I can say number one is B. Okay, what about number two? Who can tell me? Number two is, excellent, kayaking. And kayaking, this is E. So it's kayaking and you go kayaking using a paddle. Okay, what about number three? Number three, he said that it is horse riding. Excellent, so I'm talking about F. And whenever you go horse riding, you have to have, you have to be wearing what? Riding boots, excellent. Number four, he said what as number four? I can hear you, excellent, snorkeling, A. So snorkeling, this is number four, and you go snorkeling using a snorkel. After this, I have number five, and number five he mentioned as fishing, so this is D. And whenever you go fishing, you have to have a fishing rod, the last one is six and this is C, sailing and you have to wear a life jacket. Okay, I think this exercise was very easy. Nice, let's move to another exercise. Here we were answering page 34, okay? So after page 34, I want you to move with me to page 36, here. 
Okay, in page 36 here, we already said most of the sports that we have here, but to explain how do I feel when I practice those sports, I have some adjectives. Let's look at the adjectives that we have here. The first adjective that we have, when you love something very much and you like it very much, I have to use the verb fond of fond of i am fond of uh sailing for example fond of means i love it so much so fond of means to love something very much okay another word that another verb that i can use is that i am crazy about i am crazy about means i'm very excited about this thing okay like the bungee jumping for example i'm crazy about bungee jumping okay so you you are very very excited and interested to try it okay another uh, verb that i can use when i'm talking about a sport i can use the verb not keen on not keen on means don't like it very much okay i'm not keen on doing this okay means I don't like it that much half and half okay another uh, verb I can you uh, um, a word that I can use is scared of scared scared means I cannot try it okay I'm afraid I I'm not sure whether I'm going to be safe or not so scared means you're afraid you can't try this thing Okay, the last one that we have here is terrified of. Terrified of. Terrified of means so, so frightened. I will never, ever think about trying this one. Okay, I'm terrified of. Fine. So, now, after we knew those, uh, those words, let's try to use them in an exercise. Okay, here on page 36, exercise number seven, you have to listen and repeat, and you have to tell me what are you terrified of, according to what you're going to listen. So let's listen together. Page 36, unit three, lesson three, activity seven. Listen and repeat the sentences. What are you terrified of? One. She's fond of rafting. Two. He's crazy about bungee jumping. Three. He's not keen on rock climbing. Four. She's scared of scuba diving. Five. He's terrified of hang gliding. Nice. So the boy that I have here is terrified of hang gliding. What about you guys? Which sport are you terrified of? Hmm, who can tell me? Ah, I hear different answers, but all of you are correct because this is something that you have to decide. What is the most, the scariest um, um, sport that you cannot ever try? You're terrified of it. Some people can be terrified of uh, rafting or bungee jumping or rock climbing, scuba diving, hang gliding, even snorkeling or horse riding any of these sports it's up to you whether is it okay for you to try it or is it something terrify you are terrified of you will never try to do it okay now i want you to listen to exercise eight you have to read and guess the missing words then listen and sing first of all he gave me four words here you have to read them and we have to read the song before we listen and i want you to try to guess i will put which word in which space and after guessing together, we are going to listen and answer. So the first word you have is terrified of, and then you have sailing, fond of, and scared of. Let's read the song together. What are you? I'm fond of these. Scuba diving and rock climbing, big rocks and the sea. So if she said she's fond of these, so what are you? Mm -hmm. I will let you guess. Number two. What aren't you keen on? I am not keen on these. Fishing and not exciting. You see? So if he's not keen on, 
Let's see what he is not keen on. Which one? Which kind of sports? I give you a hint, huh? Number three. What are you being up in the air? Bungee jumping, hang gliding, not very safe, you see? So he is going to talk about what you... The last one. Anything else you ask? I am sharks. What do you think he is about sharks? Hmm. Okay, I think all of you guessed some of the answers. Now let's listen to the song and fill in the missing parts together. Page 36. Unit 3. Lesson 3. Activity 8. Read and guess the missing words. Then listen and sing. you already knew the answers I think you already knew it was very easy and the music was very very slow so the answers were very clear so let's try to answer together okay what about number one he said what are you I'm fond of these so what are you fond of yes so you're going to write a number one fond of Okay, number two, she said, what aren't you keen on? I'm not keen on these, fishing and? From those four words, which one is another sport? Excellent, bravo, junior four, sailing. Okay, let's see number three. What are you being up in the air, bungee jumping, hang gliding, not very safe? If they are not very safe, you are going to be? Huh? Excellent scared of the last one number four she said anything else you ask i am what of sharks all of us are what of sharks bravo terrified of excellent so number four here is terrified of okay after finishing this exercise i want you to move from page 36 i want you to go to page 38 okay we have the reading part here he give you like um, a card okay that uh, a boy is sending this card to his grandparents because in the title you can see dear grandma and grandpa so he is sending this this po uh, this postcard to his grandparents what is the name of this boy you'll find it down in the signature do you remember like in the email I write dear, this is the, the name in beside dear, this is the one I'm sending to. And in the signature down, this is the name of the one who wrote whatever, the postcard or the email. So here I have the name of the boy is Eric. Excellent, guys. Let's see what did Eric tell his grandparents, okay? Let's listen together and then we will going to answer some questions about this postcard. Page 38, Unit 3, Lesson 5. Activity 13. Listen and read. Then answer the questions. Dear Grandma and Grandpa, how are you? I'm having a great time at the beach with Mum, Dad and Chris. It's warm and sunny and there are a lot of things to do. We arrived yesterday before lunch. 
We went to the hotel and we ate lunch there. I had spicy chicken and it was delicious. The hotel is great. I can see the beach from my bedroom window. In the afternoon, Mum and Chris went snorkeling. They saw lots of fish and coral. I didn't go with them. I went surfing with Dad. This morning, I got up early and I went horse riding on the beach with Dad and Chris. Mum didn't go because she wanted to read a book. This afternoon, we're going to visit Uncle Rob and Aunt Lucy. We want to go sailing in their boat. I'm really excited. Lots of love, Eric. Okay, so now we read what Eric wrote to his grandma and grandpa. Okay? So, after we finished reading, let's look at those questions here. And we have to answer together. Let's read question number one. He said, who went to the beach with Eric? Ha! Huh. If I go back to the text and we read about the part that they were going to the beach, I can see the beach from my bedroom. And in the afternoon, mom and Chris went snorkeling. And I went surfing with dad. So who went to the beach? All of them. So... So, all of them went to the beach with Eric. You have to tell me, Miss Ines, you wrote in a small letters and you have to make it capital letters. So, his mom, and da his mom, dad, and Chris, what went to the beach with Eric? Okay? What about number two? Question number two. Where did Eric's family have lunch? Where did they have lunch? So I will write, they had lunch where, excellent, at the hotel. Okay, question number three. When did mom and Chris go snorkeling? If we go back here and we looked for mom and Chris here in the afternoon, mom and Chris went snorkeling. So they went snorkeling in the afternoon. Okay, question number four. Okay, number four. What did Eric and Dad do yesterday afternoon? Ha, huh? they did what? Hmm, excellent. They went surfing. They went surfing. Let's see question five. Where did Eric go? Horse riding this morning. He went horse riding, but he went horse riding where? Ha, uh, excellent. He went horse riding on the beach. Number six. When is Eric's family going to visit Uncle Rob and Aunt Lucy? They are going when, excellent. They are going this afternoon. Okay. Question seven. He is saying what in question 7? Is Eric enjoying his holiday? Do you think yes or no? Of course, he is. So I will say yes, he is. Ha, huh, why? Because he said what? Because he said that he is having a great time and he likes the hotel and the food and he is excited. So because... Okay? Okay, now after we finished page 38, I want you to open with me page 41. So let's go together to page 41 here. Here I have a text, okay? And this text is very interesting, by the way. We're going to read it together and it's lovely, I assure you. So, this text is talking about what he said here, read, then say true or false. I have to read and then answer the sentences down, I will write true or false. Let's read together. The text here is called, save the reeves. What are the reeves? Let's read and we will understand their meaning from the text. Coral reeves are made of small sea animals and their skeletons. So, from the picture here, you can see this is these are the coral reeves. It looks like plants, okay, but they are very hard and very strong. They can even cut a ship into two, 
okay uh, small animals and their skeletons you can find it inside them and you can find here I'm going to the next sentence you can find coral reefs in the sea where it's hot and sunny so whenever you have the sea and the weather is hot and sunny you can see the coral reefs very obvious the, you can see them once you dive underwater they are not on the surface they are deep down in the sea so you can find the coral reefs in the sea where it's hot and sunny they are called the rainforests of the sea do you know what's a rainforest this is like a big forest that receives a lot of rain okay but this one here there is no rain it's already in the water so it's like looks like a forest because as i told you it looks like plants with different colors and they are very colorful okay so they are the rainforest of the sea because a lot of fish and sea animals live on them okay you can find a lot of sea animals and fish living there there are seahorses sea snakes starfish butterfly fish parrotfish and many more all of these kinds of fish they all live in the coral reefs there are a lot of pretty colors in the reef how does this coral reef make you feel whenever you look at it how do you feel yes it's amazing and they are very very colorful so they are very exciting they are eye-catching you know what's the meaning of eye-catching means they can catch your attention they look great and beautiful okay let's read the second part here he said now look at these at uh, this coral reef this the second picture here it's white and there are no fish or sea animals on it why do you think there are no fish or animals living in this excellent bravo they look what frozen yes they are all covered in ice so why do you think let's read the sea is too hot because of the global warming and the coral reef is dead so whenever the coral reef die their color change into this because the water is very hot it's very high temperature and what's the meaning of global warming global warming this is the high temperature of the earth okay the center of the earth so underneath the water there is a ground and under this ground this is the center of the earth where the temperature is very high so the water will be very high in temperature it's gonna be very hot and once it's very hot the coral reef cannot live because they live only in warm water but once the water is too hot they cannot live they die okay so uh, fish don't like that coral this is why you cannot find fish in that coral how does this coral reef make, makes you feel ha uh, the coral reef here makes you feel sad of course because they are like they are deserted no animals living there do you know what's the meaning of deserted means free no animals no sea creatures nothing dead empty this is the meaning of deserted so he said here please help us to save the coral reefs okay now let's look at the questions here we need to say is it true or false so let's look here there are we are say we are looking at number one there are coral reefs in cold seas ha uh, yeah we said that coral reefs they cannot live in the hot water so do you think it's gonna find uh, it live in warm water so do you think you're gonna find it in the cold water no so of course this is false okay number two he said a lot of fish and sea animals live on coral reefs excellent this is true number three there are parrots and butterflies on the reef you know the parrot the real parrot the birds and the butterflies that fly of course not he said parrot fish and butter and what and butterfly fish so not the real butterfly and the real parrot no there is a kind of fish that's called parrot fish and butterfly fish so of course this sentence is false number four he says here that coral is white excellent yes that's true number five he says here global warming makes the sea too cold 
it's already called global warming so it's going to make the sea what yes too hot so the answer is false the last one number six here fish don't like that coral yes we already said that that coral are deserted nobody is living there so number six is true okay nice let's go back after we finish here on page 41 i want you to go to page 42 page 42 here we have the culture in the culture part we are going to read about whose summer camp was near the sea so we have two students they went camping and which one of them was camping near the sea so let's read together and then we will answer some questions the first one here who wrote this uh, this small piece of writing you have his name down here his name is Elliot he's 10 years old and he's from Scotland and he's talking about his summer camp he said hi I'm Elliot I live in Scotland last August I went to a summer camp for two weeks it was near a national park and it was fantastic I did adventure activities like kayaking and drafting I did some sports too I really like playing football and volleyball I love sports and adventure so here we read about Il uh, Elliot. Do you think Elliot was near the sea? Mm. Okay, I can hear you saying the answer, but let's read the second text and then we decide which one. Who is talking here? What's her name? Yes, you can find it down. Her name is Carolina. Uh, Carolina and Carolina is also 10 years old but she's from the United States let's see what did Carolina say my name is Carolina and I live in Los Angeles last summer I went to a beach summer camp for three weeks it was a wonderful place at the seaside I practiced lots of fun activities for children I went surfing and snorkeling. I also played beach volleyball and I went on a sea life safari. I loved spending my summer at the beach. And who can guess whose summer camp was near the sea? Nice. So I think the two of them. Because the first boy, he or of course, Carol, Carolina was there, was near the sea because she went snorkeling and surfing okay and she was near the seaside she already said it she was by the beach but here Elliot he said he was near the National Park but he also said that he I did adventure activities so he went somewhere where there was water and he went kayaking and rafting but I don't think that this is in the sea so the one we are talking about here that went by the sea near the sea is Carolina yes so now we need to answer true or false let's look at the sentences here and write the answer number one i have elliot is from los angeles who is from los angeles yes carolina so this is false number two he went to a beach camp did he say a beach camp no so he went to the national park so this is also false number three he did adventure activities at summer camp yes he said that he did some adventure activities like crafting right and kayaking number four carolina is from the united states bravo it's true number five she didn't enjoy the beach no she said that she enjoyed very much and she enjoyed spending time there so this is false number six the last question here she went surfing and snorkeling last summer yes she did so the last one is true okay nice I hope that you enjoyed this lesson very much uh, we have learned a lot of sports 
and some of them were practiced in the water and some of them were practiced in the air and some of them like horse riding it's done in a special places like where you have horses and you have a ground okay so i hope that you enjoyed this lesson very much and see you in a new lesson bye